Hello, good morning students. Our today's topic is oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. Oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve is an important tool for understanding how our blood carries and releases the oxygen. Specifically, the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curves relate oxygen saturation that is SO2 and partial pressure of oxygen in the blood that is PO2 and is determined by what is called hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen that is how readily hemoglobin acquires and releases oxygen molecule from its surrounding tissue. Hemoglobin an intracellular protein in the primary vehicle for transporting oxygen in the blood. Oxygen is also carried, dissolved in plasma in very less amount. Hemoglobin is contained in RBC, more commonly referred to as erythrocytes. Under certain condition, oxygen bound to hemoglobin is released into the body tissues and under other it is absorbed from tissues into the blood. Each hemoglobin molecule has a limited capacity for holding oxygen molecule. The oxygen carrying capacity is determined by the amount of hemoglobin present in the blood. The oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve describes the relation between the partial pressure of oxygen on the x axis and the oxygen saturation on the y axis. Hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen increases as successive molecules of oxygen bind. More molecules bind as oxygen partial pressure increases until the maximum amount that can be bound is achieved. At this limit is approached very little additional binding occurs and the curve levels out as hemoglobin becomes saturated with oxygen. Hence the curve is sigmoidal or S shaped. At partial pressure above 60 mm of Hg the standard dissociation curve is relatively flat. This means that the oxygen content of the blood does not change significantly even with large increase in oxygen partial pressure. To get more oxygen to the tissues would require blood transfusion to increase the hemoglobin count and hence the oxygen carrying capacity or supplemental oxygen that would increase the oxygen dissolved in the plasma. Although binding of oxygen to hemoglobin contain, continues to some extent for pressure below about 60 mm of Hg as oxygen partial pressure decreases in very steep areas of the curve. The oxygen is unloaded to peripheral tissue readily as the hemoglobin's affinity diminishes. The partial pressure of oxygen in the blood at which the hemoglobin is 50% saturated typically about 26.6 mm of Hg for a healthy person. It is known as P50. P50 is conventional measure of hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. In the presence of disease or other condition that changes the hemoglobin oxygen affinity and consequently shift the curve to right or left, the P50 changes accordingly. An increased P50 indicates a rightward shift of saturated curve, which means that larger partial pressure is necessary to maintain a 50% oxygen saturation. This indicates a decreased affinity. Conversely, a lower P50 indicates leftward shift and a higher affinity. 
so there are various factors which are affecting the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve first factor is variation of hydrogen ion concentration this change the blood ph a decrease in ph shifts the standard curve to right while increase shifts it to the left this is also known as bohr's effect so from the top graph we can say that if the ph is changed the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve it changes accordingly effect of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide affect the curve in two ways first it influences intracellular ph that is a bohr's effect and second carbon dioxide accumulation causes carb amino groups to be generated through chemical interactions low level of carb amino compounds have the effect of shifting the curve towards right while higher level causes the leftward shifts so in the lower graph we can see that is the low blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide shifted the curve towards the left side whereas the higher shifted towards the right side next is the effect of 2,3 dpg 2,3 diphosphoglycerate or 2,3 dpg is an organophosphate which is created in the erythrocytes during glycolysis the production of 2,3 dpg is likely to play important role because the production increases for severe condition in the presence of diminished peripheral tissue oxygen availability such as hypoxemia chronic lung diseases anemia conjunctive heart failure among others higher level of 2,3 dpg shifts the curve towards the right whereas the lower level of 2,3 dpg causes the leftward shift seen in the states such as septic shocks and hypophosphatemia so in this figure we can see if the level is high the curve it shifts to the right while if the low level of 2,3 dpg is there the curve it shifts to the left next is the temperature temperature does not have so dramatic effect as the previous factor but hyperthermia causes a rightward shift while the hypothermia causes the leftward shift so increase and decrease of temperature they shifts the curve next is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is very important because hemoglobin binds with carbon monoxide 240 times more readily than the oxygen therefore the presence of carbon monoxide interfere with hemoglobin acquisition of oxygen in addition to lowering the potential for hemoglobin to bind to oxygen carbon monoxide also has effect of shifting the curve towards the left with an increased level of carbon monoxide a person can suffer from severe hypoxemia while maintaining a normal partial pressure of oxygen then is the effect of methemoglobinemia a form of abnormal hemoglobin methemoglobinemia causes a leftward shift to the curve next feature is the fetal hemoglobin fetal hemoglobin is structurally different from the normal hemoglobin the fetal dissociation curve is shifted to the left relative to the curve for the normal adult typically fetal arterial oxygen pressures are low and hence the leftward shift enhances the placenta for the uptake of oxygen fetal hemoglobin has higher affinity for oxygen fetal hemoglobin binds less strongly to bpg fetal hemoglobin can carry 30 percent more oxygen than maternal hemoglobin a as the maternal blood enters the placenta it is readily transferred to the fetal blood so clinical uses of the dissociation curve the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve and the role of hemoglobin are important clinically in understanding the relationship of arterial oxygen saturation 
to the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood particularly as it relates to the disease for example it is useful to observed in healthy patients that the slope of curve increases significantly from the mid 60s downwards which indicates to a health professional that decrease in partial pressure of oxygen in this region will have dramatic effect on arterial oxygen saturation it is useful to have a good grasp on the influence of factors that can affect the curve and the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen for example it is useful to remember that powerful effects of carbon monoxide is trying to explain hypoxemia in the presence of normal partial pressure of oxygen and normal saturation of oxygen understanding the elements of the dissociation curve such as the basis of oxygen saturation can also help explain clinical problems for example the differential diagnosis of patients that presents with shortness of breath in the presence of adequate ventilation and saturation of oxygen should include hemoglobin deficiency because routine saturation of oxygen calculations are based on normal hemoglobin values so this is regarding oxy hemoglobin dissociation curve so sincere thanks to www.google.com for providing us beautiful pics so that we can explain our topic well thank you